right, this is John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm here at the 2013 Natural Products Expo East, and I'm actually speaking at the TriBest booth every single day of this three-day trade show. And I'm here today to actually share with you guys my talk that I'll be giving in just a minute. I'm gonna actually be using some of the TriBest products, including the Citrus Star Juicer, the DynaBlend Blender, and the Sedona Combo Dehydrator, which is their new dehydrator, uh, to make some delicious kale chips. Super simple, super easy recipe. So I guess without further ado, let's go over there and uh, get started and show you guys how to make some delicious kale chips using the TriBest products that makes healthy living easy. All right, hello everybody. Today I'll be demonstrating some of the unique TriBest products that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables because after all, the motto of TriBest is making healthy living easy. And by me, healthy living is simply by eating fruits and vegetables. Those are the healthiest foods on the planet. Um, on the Andy Scoring System, which is made up by Dr. Joel Furman, who was a keynote speaker here two days ago, he talked about the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, and these are things like kale, collard greens, watercress, so the leafy greens followed by vegetables and followed by the fruits. So it's my goal to eat out of these categories of foods as much as possible, and most of my diet is fresh fruits and vegetables, actually. And I'll encourage everybody's diet to be uh, rich in fruits and vegetables as well. Uh, one of the new advents here at the show is the advent of kale chips. There's many different kale chip booths here, you know, and kale chips, definitely a much better food to eat than potato chips because you're eating more fresh leafy greens, which are really nutrient dense. But the problem is many of the kale chips here at the show are range in retail price from $5.99 to $7.99. I'm like, oh, for a bag? Yeah, well, that's a little bag or a little box that might be just two ounces. I mean, this stuff is expensive as some herbs. <laughs> so what we're gonna do today is actually show you guys how you could use some of the TriBest products to make your own kale chips at home, so you're gonna save a lot of money. And this is especially true if you're growing your own vegetables at home, like growing kale. Kale is super simple to grow. You literally plant the seeds. They come up. As soon as the leaves start emerging, you can start to eat them. Unlike tomatoes or peppers where you actually got to plant the seeds, then the plant comes up. You can't eat all those leaves. You got to wait for the tomatoes to develop and then ripen. Whereas with the leafy greens, you grow it and as soon as they're there, man, you can start picking and eating the leaves. They're so delicious. So to do this today, we're going to need a couple things. First, we're going to need the kale. So we got some nice, delicious kale here. And when making kale chips, definitely the best to de-stem them because when you dehydrate the stems, they get to be like little toothpicks and it can puncture the roof of your mouth. Actually, that's happened to me before, it's not fun. Uh, in addition, we're gonna need the sauce. So the sauce, super simple, super easy to make. The base of our sauce today is simply just gonna be uh, orange juice that we're gonna use the Tribest Citrus Star juicer to make. And then we're gonna need to um, add something to the sauce to make it taste good. So today, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> and today what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this product here, it's actually called the uh, Gras Almonds. And this is a Cajun barbecue raw food almonds that have basically been uh, sprouted almonds with seasonings. And we're gonna add that to the orange juice to make our quick and dirty batter to spread on our kale chips. Now if you didn't have the granola, the gras almonds, or any other uh, thing like this, you just pretty much use some nuts and some spices, which is basically how I do it. Many people nowadays in raw foods may use kale with some olive oil and salt, but I don't recommend using olive oil and salt. Olive oil is basically 100% fat, and salt is very high in sodium. So in this way, we're using whole nuts that have a lot more nutrient density and a lot of other things besides just the fat in there, but they'll also give you the nice fatty flavor. And in addition, there's other seasonings in here besides just the salt. So the first step is we're just gonna go ahead and simply uh, cut these oranges open and get some orange juice out of the Citrus Star. Now I like the Citrus Star juicer because it does have a few unique components that other citrus juicers do not have. Number one, it has a stainless steel juicing screen here. Many of them are plastic on many machines. Also, it has a stainless steel spout here that actually goes up to clip it off and then clip it down. So when you want the juice to flow out, you just push it down. It, the juice will flow out and clip it up if you don't have a collection cup down below there. In addition, this has a different size strainer cones. So you could juice from small lemons to big grapefruits with the Citrus Star. So now that we got our orange cut up, and I do recommend when you are juicing citrus to juice uh, the navel, or uh, actually Valencia oranges instead of the navel oranges, they tend to be a lot more juicier than the navels.
And uh, this machine you could use uh, either hand. I'm actually right-handed, but I'm only using my left hand. It's very simple. You just put the orange on there. You press it and you squeeze the orange a little bit and it'll make it nice and dry. So to me, health is about eating more fruits and vegetables, and that's why I really like the Tribest products, such as a citrus juicer that will allow you to eat more citrus. I mean, it'd be hard to sit here and eat, you know, I don't know, five oranges, but now when we're juicing it, we're literally getting the essence of the nutrition out of the orange, and then we're going to blend that up with some nuts and then get some leaves with the kale and then have a delicious, literally, meal replacement, dehydrated meal replacement. Now, when eating any dehydrated food, I always encourage you guys to, you know, uh, drink some water, drink some fresh juice, with that to rehydrate the food. It'll digest a lot easier. All right, I think we need about one more orange and then we'll be good. All right, now that we're done with the orange juicer, we're just gonna press this up. It's gonna lock it back so we're not gonna get any more drips. We're gonna move our orange juice over. That definitely make a nice breakfast. We're gonna move the uh, citrus star out the way here. Now we're going to talk about the DynaBlend horsepower blender. This is a nice glass blender, has a nice glass craft. Over one horsepower of strength, in addition some sharp blades. This blender runs at over 20,000 RPMs, which is considered a high speed blender. Many blenders you may buy in your local department store runs at a low speed, and they're not going to work like this one will or other high speed blenders. Literally what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna put the orange juice and our flavored almonds in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna make a cream sauce out of the almonds. We don't want big, large chunks of almonds because that's no fun. We want it to be nice and creamy and you need a high power blender such as the DynaBlend to do that. Uh, some other features of the DynaBlend, it actually has a nice uh, one tablespoon scoop that is good to measure things, whether you're measuring in green powders or other powders uh, in your blender. But you can also use it to push things into the blade to ensure it gets blended up properly. Another feature that's unlike many other units in this price range, it actually has a variable speed control, so much like the volume on your TV, you could go from quiet to, you know, your roommate sleeping at night to really loud if you're having a party. Um, nice, and then also it has some time features, some automatic features, so you could actually uh, put it on a 60 second blend where you hit the button for 60 seconds, it blends, meanwhile you could go outside, harvest some leafy greens from your garden, and then uh, come back and it turns itself off. So it will not over uh, blend your food. It also has a combo uh, setting, once again for 60 seconds time cycle that's gonna vary the speed. And finally it has a really cool feature, the 30 second pulse feature, which is specifically designed to pulse blend your items. This is specifically important when blending something like bananas so that you do not over blend them. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and uh, take this guy off and let's go ahead and uh, pour some orange juice in there. And next we're gonna go ahead and uh, add our almonds right here. Now the amount of almonds or nuts that you add to your mixture is totally dependent on you. You can make it nice, thick, and creamy, and you know, another thing you could do besides this stuff to make kale chips, you could actually use this as your salad dressing at night. So I mean, you could eat kale fresh, you could use this as your salad dressing, or you could dehydrate it so you have more flexibility and more options to maybe get a nice crunchy texture if that's what you need to eat more fruits and vegetables. We're gonna go then here and uh, turn this up to high. All right, I think we're blended up pretty good. It's a, it's a fairly thick recipe or mixture so far, but I want to make it a little bit thicker. So what we're going to add next is one of my other favorite nuts, and these are just uh, raw macadamia nuts. Raw macadamia nuts have actually have a nice fatty uh, texture. When blended up specifically, they cream up really nice. Well, that's going. We're going to go ahead and de-stem our kale, because once again, we are making the uh, kale chips. Very important to de-stem your kale when dehydrating it, otherwise these stems will turn into nice, hard toothpick. The easiest way to do that is just take the kale and you're just gonna hold the stem and just pull it up. And you'll just get all the nice soft leaf parts out. The next thing I like to do is just take a, the uh, dehydrator tray and uh, set some of these leaves up on the dehydrator tray. And we're just gonna simply spread the batter. Now to do the dehydrating today, we are using the Sedona dehydrator. This is actually the new combo model that is now available. The reason why I like the Sedona dehydrator is because it's the quietest, 
living in raw foods dehydrator that I found. It has two fans in the back. You could run either the top half or the bottom half. Plus it's all computer digitally controlled so that you can control if you only want to run the top half or the bottom half. Plus the new combo model has a option where you could actually run it at a hot temperature for a specific period of time to evaporate a lot of the moisture and then drop it down to a more raw foods appropriate temperature for the rest of the dehydration time. This will lower the overall time needed. Now that we got our kale spread out there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, use our handy stainless steel scoop. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and take the blender craft, it's a nice creamy uh, dressing. And we're just gonna take some of this and simply pour it on our kale chips. And uh, use a scoop here to uh, spread it out. Fairly good. I mean, this is how simple it is to make some kale chips. Literally, with a few Try Best products, you could easily make some kale chips. And I wish I was gonna be around tomorrow for when these guys would be finished. One of the things I like about the Sedona dehydrator, besides that the temperature is adjustable, is that it has a built-in timer. So in this way, you will not have to babysit your dehydrator. You could have it automatically turn off after a specific period of time. In addition, these have removable trays. So say these kale chips for now are like puffing up really high because curly kale is, you know, sometimes it gets really high. Di dinosaur kale is nice because it's more flat. You could actually just, uh, you know, take one of the trays out and put it in there and skip a tray. And the secret thing is, once this is dehydrated for a while, it'll actually compress down a little bit and then you could go ahead and replace the next tray in there. So let's go ahead and uh, batter up some more kale. Once again, we're just gonna take our kale and hold it. And that's gonna take off the uh, major part of the stem that would get stuck in your mouth if you didn't dehydrate it. And we're just gonna lay up the kale here on the tray. Real simple, real easy to make kale chips. You could definitely save a lot of money instead of buying two ounces of kale chips for $7.99 retail or two and a half ounces, uh, making it yourself if you have the proper equipment. Now it's very important to me to dehydrate at a low temperature like the Sedona dehydrator will allow you to do to keep the most amount of nutrition. I always want to encourage you guys, if you do choose to cook your food, you know, cook at the lowest temperature possible, dehydrate at the lowest temperature possible. Uh, there have been studies that show at higher temperatures, uh, carcinogens can be created in food. So things like baking, at high temperature frying, some of the worst types of ways to cook your food, some of the best types, some of the best ways to quote unquote cook your food, in my opinion, is dehydration is probably the best, followed by something like uh, steaming or boiling, which is gonna keep your temperature down. So we're simply gonna batter this up. A traditional way to make the kale chips is actually to take the batter in a large bowl and just uh, put all the leaves in there and just toss them in there like you toss a salad. I prefer to do it like this, it's a little bit easier and also the other thing is I want to get a higher ratio of leaves to sauce. If you're tossing it in a bowl, if you get this whole leaf covered in batter, you're going to be eating a lot more sauce per the given uh, space of the leaf. So it's really important for me to uh, coat the top of the leaves like this instead of just putting it in a batter and just tossing it where you'll get batter all over the entire leaf. If you put batter on top of the entire leaf, you're gonna be eating more of the batter. And my goal is to eat more leaves because people, you know, I could probably sit here and eat this straight. Most people are not gonna sit and eat kale straight. So I wanna get people eating more kale, less batter. So by having your own dehydrator, making your own batter, you can choose to do that and not fully immerse this in batter. Plus, if you do it appropriately, and do it properly, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean up because if you have batter on top of your trays and at the end of the dehydration process, you're gonna have to scrub your trays to get all the dry batter off. In this way, it's a lot more neat and easy to clean because literally, if you do it right, you won't have to clean the tray because you're not gonna get any over, over spray or over splatter of the kale. All right, I think we got all these guys battered up. We're just gonna go ahead now and uh, put this in the Sedona dehydrator and uh, we're gonna get this guy uh, started up and dehydrating. One of the features that I really like about the uh, Sedoni dehydrator that I want to go over really quick before I start the dehydration process is a uh, number one, a drip tray. 
know they're dehydrated. I know it has a nice drip tray that actually fits in on the bottom, so this makes cleanup a breeze. Literally just put the drip tray in, all the drips will go down there. You pull this out to clean it. Another thing is that they have a, a screen now that has been improved with the increased air circulation with a hole in the middle, plus a one-piece unit. Uh, previously, it had a frame with the, with the uh, screen that would fit on top. All we're going to do now is uh, just close this door up. We're set to 118. It's on 10 hours. We're just going to hit the start button. And can you believe it? It's running right now. I can't even hear it standing right next to it. It's that quiet. So, um, you know, pretty much, probably about overnight, the kale chips will be done. We'll have some nice, delicious, raw kale chips where you could save a lot of money by doing it at home yourself with some of the Tribest products. Once again, we use the Citrus Star Juicer, the Dyna Blend Blender, and the all new Sedona Combo Dehydrator to make it happen. Thank you. All right, so I hope you guys out there in YouTube land enjoyed this episode of learning how to make your own kale chips using the Tribest products. I mean, it really is that simple and really is that easy. Definitely, I recommend the Tribest Sedona as my number one favorite dehydrator for raw foods because it'll keep that temperature really low. I like the uh, Dyna Blend Blender because it is a glass pitcher blender, the most powerful blender that I've found that'll do a decent job with grinding up nuts to make that special sauce for your salad at night or for your special kale chips. And of course, the Citrus Star Juicers, really inexpensive citrus juicer that's gonna work for many years to come. They are quite durable, and I've seen them being used for many years. In any case, now you know how to make some kale chips. I want you guys to do that at home so that you guys can eat healthier, so that you'll be wealthier in the end. So once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. Discountjuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm so excited for today's episode. What we're going to do is something totally new and different and probably never been done before. What we're going to do is we're going to make watermelon so 